from you. I heard from you. I thank you again. A lot of those that gave me uh, birthday wishes. I heard from more of y'all than I hear on a normal program. So I know you're hearing, but I need to hear from you to let me know that you're hearing the word and you're getting the word of the Lord uh, uh, around the world. So give me some comment. Just give me a like or a thumbs up or something to let me know that you're receiving the word because I've got over 4,500, 5,000 uh, people on my Facebook page that are, that are listening. A lot of them just listen, but they don't make comments. You know, they're getting it, but they're not, they're not saying anything. So I need to hear you say something so I can go through my list and get rid of the ones who are just hanging on and ain't receiving nothing. I can put somebody else on. I don't want to have to start another page uh, with that. So uh, we pray for that. So let me open in prayer this morning and uh, you, we get ready. Father, I thank you and praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, I bless the name of Jesus this morning. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that is here right now. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome. We uh, enter into the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. We thank you for this day. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for watching over us. We thank you uh, for uh, uh, taking care. We thank you for even in advance, Lord, that you're going to make sure that our electric bills are down. We're going to make sure that our, our we don't have to we don't have to worry about gas bills, electric bills this winter. You're going to cause the weather to be so balmy that we won't even need our utilities. We bind that lying spirit in the name of G. We bind that lying spirit uh, uh, of this of this uh, uh, green green new deal. These lying spirits that shut down the coal factories and shut down the the coal mines and shut it down so they can cause the gas prices to go high. We bind that spirit. We bind that spirit uh, that's over with this United States government that are attacking uh, businesses that, that will even uh, uh, help the coal miners, the businesses that would even uh, uh, deal with that. Lord, they want to shut them down so they can charge us high prices for gas. And, and even in Russia and in Europe, we pray for those people in Europe. Uh, even in Germany, they're telling people, just get you a candle and put it in a cup and sit around it and stay warm. But yet they still have, they shut down the, the, the nuclear power plants. They shut down the coal mining. They shut down and want people to freeze to death. They want them to freeze to death when all they got to do is turn the switch back on. We bind this spirit that is around the world. We bind the mind. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray that you release the mighty men. Release the mighty men in the earth. Wake up the mighty men, as Joel says. Wake them up, Lord. We break in pieces the Hittites, the Amorites, the Moabites, Rahab, the spirits of pride. We bind all these giants in the land, all these giants of corporations that are in, in cahoots with the, with the government, with the far left we bind these spirits Lord and we pray and we decree and declare that you shall continually expose these rats expose them in their dens expose them in their caves expose them in their, in their, their secret deals and backroom deals and we prophesy the wind of God begin to blow destruction upon their plans begin to blow destruction upon their plots begin to blow destruction on their schemes let them be caught in their own trap let them be caught in their own scheme we thank you that you're raising up mighty prophets you're raising up mighty apostles you're raising up mighty men that will speak with one voice on one accord around the earth. We shake the nations this morning. Father, we go by your word. You said we will shake the nations. And so we shake the nations of this wickedness, the sinister plot that's going on around the world. We shake it in the name of Jesus. Father, we come against these billionaires. Uh, we come against the Lord. It'll be a good time uh, when they gather next week at Davos. All these billionaires that come up with their wicked plans. It'll be a nice time to remember the time with Cora and the boys. Uh, shake it up, open up the earth, and suck them down in the name of Jesus. Father, we take off the restraints this morning. We take up the sword of the Spirit this morning. And we say no more in this nation. No more around the world. We block darkness in the name of Jesus. We prophesy to the winds of God. We prophesy to the dead, dry bones of the prophets and the apostles. We prophesy to those that have been hiding in caves and hiding in their churches and hiding and not speaking the word of the Lord to God's people not declaring lift up your voice like a trumpet this morning around the world in your village around the world in Africa and in India and around in Pakistan the revivals are breaking out around the earth people are standing up against wickedness in this hour so father shake your people once again wake them up again let them shake off the dust off of them let them open up their eyelids once again open up their ears that they may 
they hear the truth and the truth is in your glory so release your fire release your glory we call down the fire of Elijah in this hour the fire of Elijah on America the fire on Elijah on the White House the fire of Elijah upon him Lord burn him up burn him up burn him up give no rest to the wicked this morning give no rest in the White House this morning Re reveal them expose them Pull them down in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Father, we pray and we believe you said if we touch and agree on anything, it'll be done by the Father in the heaven. So, Father, we speak and declare and decree this morning that we're in jubilee. We declare that we're in rest. We declare that we're in freedom. We declare that the freedom of the Lord shall reign throughout the earth, throughout America, that we will not go down. We will not have a bad winter. We will not have a dark winter. We refute these words. We pull these words out of the spirit realm and we cast them down to the ground and we speak life life you shall live and not die you shall live and receive the presence of God your family shall live your store will not fail your oil will not fail your money will not fail your checking account will not fail you will not be in, in scarcity and lack in this hour for we decree the word of the Lord that life comes finances come wealth comes blessing comes devil back up off of us in the name of Jesus Father, we thank you right now. We thank you right now. You didn't give us a butter knife. You gave us a sword. And we speak the word of the Lord, hallelujah, into the airways. The enemy goes to steal the word. Let him try to catch this word. Let it cut. This is not your word like a hammer that breaks the rocks into pieces. This is not your word like a sword piercing the divided asunder and soul and spirit. I sent out light. I sent out revival. From this place, in the name of Jesus, everyone that is watching right now, the presence of the Lord is being beginning to rest upon you. It's beginning to come up under your door. It's becoming under the crack of your door. The glory is coming into your home. The glory is coming into your room. The glory is coming into your church. The glory, who can stop it? Who can stop the Lord of lords and the King of kings? Is he Lord God Almighty? He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no other God besides our God. There is no other God. All power is given unto Jesus in heaven heaven in the earth and underneath the earth it is given into the church and we decree and declare the power uh, the deutimous power of God to begin to manifest so father we give you praise this morning we thank you Lord we thank you Lord now Lord I release the angels of heaven we, we, we ask and we require and we release the host of heaven, the army of heaven, Lord, to fight on our behalf this morning as we release the word of the Lord, go into nations and begin to shake the governments, begin to shake the corrupt, begin to expose the wicked, begin to expose these witches and warlocks that are praying and fasting, begin to let their curse come upon their own head, let their hands be cut off. You said you will cut the witchcraft out of their hands. Let their hands be cut off. Let their wicked devices be cut off in the name of Jesus. Jesus oh glory to God hallelujah so we give you praise this morning thank you Lord for the prophets that are rising in Jesus name and everybody said Amen. I can see I'm stirred up here hallelujah the Holy Ghost is here hallelujah I want to continue excuse, <coughs> excuse me about the prophets and the glory and I said 2022, but a lot of times when I prophesy, I begin to bring a word like this. Sometimes it can be a year, two years, three years in advance. A lot of my messages are well in advance of most people that are prophesying. But I want to let you know, I, I want to thank a uh, couple of my prophet's friends. Uh, they text me and said, he said, this word is right on point. This is the word of the Lord. And so I'm going to share the word of the Lord. This is the shame. This is a shifting word that was the same word in the 90s when the spirit of the Lord was poured out in the 90s and the presence of God and people, miracles and signs and wonder. It's going to get intense. It's going to get stronger. Hallelujah. And so uh, we're going to share this word. The Bible says in Psalms 149, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. And the high praises means to split the ear of the enemy to, to the, the praises uh, look at Judges 6 16 I'm, I've got a lot if I don't finish it I'll finish it next week but we were talking about Gideon we were talking about the word of the Lord uh, how, how the Lord came to Gideon 
Uh, Gideon was threshing his, his, his wheat uh, by the, in the wine press, trying to hide it from the, from the Midianites, uh, uh, the Amorites, and the Arabs that came in. And, and, and uh, uh, every year they would come in and vex the children of Israel. Uh, uh, and they were doing this for seven years. They would let them grow their crops all year. And then when the crops were ready, they would flood into, is into Israel's land and take all the crops and everything. I mean, they would strip everything bare like locusts. They bring their cattle, their, their sheep, their everything, eat up all the grass. I'm okay, I got some tea here. Uh, the, all that stuff, they would eat it up. And uh, the, Lord, the angel of the Lord came to him and said, he called him a mighty man of valor. He said, who me? I'm from the project. I'm the poorest of the poor from the tribe of Manasseh. Amen. Don't nobody pay no attention to me. I can't wrestle. I can't fight. I ain't got no strength. What am I going to do? How am I going to deliver Israel? Uh, uh, hallelujah. And the Lord said in Judges 6, 16, the Lord's answer said, I will be with you and you will strike down the Midianites together. He said, we gonna, I'm going to be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. That word strike means to crush or to smash or to violent, violently plunge, to, to, to subdue, to destroy, to pierce through, to strike through, to, to wound, to smite. He said, you're going to utterly destroy the Midianites. Now, you've got to understand, he was in a place where we are now. Everybody feared. Everybody's scared of the virus. Finances are crazy. Money, you your money's getting tight. You know, you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it. And the enemy's trying to steal more of your money. They want to take your tax money. They want to look at your little $600. You ain't even got $600 look at it. You're going to be looking at nothing. You come to some of, our, some of our accounts. There ain't no money in there. This, these, these, these lies, are, and it's spent $2 trillion giving you a stimulus check. $2 trillion dollars and you still in the same spot that you was a year ago two trillion they wasted money because they can't have a, they don't have an answer for it they want to destroy you i'm serious about it. they want to destroy you the far left the democrats the world new world order they want to kill you so you better stop being a nice christian and open up your mouth and begin to decree the word of the lord and speak over your family, over your loved ones, because they want to kill all of us. They don't want you on the earth. Get your house, take your land, just a few billionaires, for a piece of paper that has no value, they will kill you. And so this is the plan of the enemy. The word is like a hammer, it's like fire. He said, my word, is not my word like a fire? Says the Lord, like a hammer that breaks the rocks into pieces. So God is going to release his word, and it's going to begin to be like fire in the earth. God revealed himself to Gideon. Gideon went and made a, a sacrifice. And he named the place where he made the sacrifice Jehovah Shalom. That's when God showed himself at Jehovah Shalom. Nothing broken, nothing missing, everything's whole. He said, I, I, not, he's prophesying to him out of this state where he's trying to hide that little food he got. Judges 6, 24 says, then Gideon built, I want you to see this. He built an altar there, and the Lord called it the Lord of Peace. To this stand, it still stands in Oprah, which belongs to the Ab Abizarites. Now, verse 25, that night the Lord said to Gideon, take your father's bull, second bull, seven years, pull down the altar of Baal. The same spirit we're dealing with. We're dealing with abortion. This is the whole fight. They want to kill the babies. They're fighting the every tooth and nail to kill the babies. Because the, the kingdom of darkness operates out of babies' blood. There's something about children's blood that the adrenochrome that's in a child gives them some kind of supernatural strength or whatever in the spirit realm. They love that blood. You old folks, they don't want you. They, they want the little kids. You made it, you say, Phew, I, I made it, amen? But they're still snatching you for sex trade but, and, and all the rest of that. And they, they, don't care, they don't care how old you are for sex trade. They'll get you too. I don't care if you're 60, 70. You ain't saved. So he said, pull down the altar of Baal that your father has cut down in Azra. That means completion. He said, pull down the altar of Baal. He said, take your father's oxen and, and, and pull down that altar of Baal because that altar is a stronghold. 
Strongholds are specific places. It can be in a city, it can be in a neighborhood where demons come up in and out in the spirit realm up to the second heaven in their realm. And they come into the earth realm. And so that altar is a portal. It's a dedicated place where principalities in the area reign. And every village, I go, I've been in Nigeria, I've been to India, and a lot of these villages, they have the witch doctor. He's got an altar there. He's got a place with all the little idols and stuff like that. That altar gives demons authority in that area to oppress the people in that area. And so you got to find an altar in the area. We had to find the altars in Aurora. We went down uh, years ago when I was doing warfare. The Lord told us on a Sunday, we went down to Fox River. And I had a can of oil, and Diane, remember, I had a can of, of motor oil in my car. And we went down and had communion, and I poured the oil and decreed cleansing of the land, cleansing of Aurora, a cleansing of it. <clears throat> and people got the, on the, what was that, not TBN, the, the uh, local, the Christian broadcast station there. They got wind of what I did. I mean, this is the first time I heard somebody doing spiritual warfare like that. And I poured that oil in the river, and you can see the oil slick going down the river. I said, Lord, cleanse it all the way to Joliet. Just cleanse it. Because Joliet was the doorway or the gateway where all this witchcraft and stuff came through, through the Fox River, coming through the Fox River. And so Illinois is very steeped in witch, witchcraft and stuff uh, along the rivers. So he said, verse 26, and build an altar of the Lord God on top of this stronghold. You got to go to the, the Bible says, how can you enter to a strong man's house unless you first bind him? You got to find out where his strongholds is. His stronghold with stones laid in proper order. Then take a second bull, offer the burnt sacrifice with the wood of Asherah, uh, of the Ashereth, which you shall cut down and remove the curse off the land. So the first thing we do is we then broke the curses over America. We've repented for America. So y'all keep talking about, well, America needs to repent. Listen, how much more repenting we got to do? Praise God. We didn't repent until our throat got sore. It's time to receive his grace and his mercy. Amen? Amen. God's not mad at America any longer. He's mad at these demons now. Yeah. Matthew 12, 28. But if I first cast out devil, but if I cast out de devils by the spirit of God, and it's not by me, by the spirit of God, then the kingdom is come unto you. So the manifestation, if you cast out one devil in your service, the kingdom of God is in your church. That's the kingdom invading that, that area. Or how else can a man enter a strong man's house, spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, then he will spoil his house. He will spoil his house. So we have to bind him. How many times do you bind the strong man? Every day. Until you get a victory. Because they say, if you go back to Psalms 2, you say, why do the heathen imagine a vain thing? Let us break their bands asunder. These devils are trying to break free every time you bind them. You got to keep binding them. Amen. You bind them until you get your breakthrough. Gideon was a warrior. The Bible says his name means warrior, a feller, to destroy everything. He was named that, the destroyer. He's named the destroyer, and he's living in the projects. <laughs> he, he the poorest of the poor, and he's the destroyer. Amen. His name means destroyer. He said, who, me? I can't even fight. Amen. Gideon probably didn't even have no strength. He'd probably fight like a girl. The guy said, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. Look at Judges 6.31. But Joash said unto all, now they got mad at him because he tore down the altar of Ashtoreth in the village, and they got mad at him, and his father said, uh, why are you contending for Baal? Or will you save him? He's a God. Y'all say he's a God. Who, he who contend for Baal, let him be put to death while it's still morning. If Baal is a God, let him contend for himself because one has pulled down his altar. In other words, he was doing like, like Elijah mocked the prophet. He said, well, where's Baal at? You on the toilet? He ain't talking to you? They're all day beating themselves, cutting themselves, doing all kind of crazy stuff. And he, he, he was on the toilet. Therefore, on that day, he called Gideon Jerubbabel, meaning let, the, let Baal contend against him because he has pulled down his altar. They called him Zerubbabel. They changed Gideon from Warrior to grappler. He's a grappler now. He's going to pull down all. He's a, he's a warrior. He's contending against Baal. They call him Jerubba Baal. He contends against him. And, and Baal couldn't beat him up. See, the devil can't kill you just because he threatens a warrior. Devils, demons can't do it. You got to do it yourself. 
Last week I talked about all the different bowels. See, we, we've been binding the spirit of bowel about the children abortion, but there's different bowel spirits that control different arenas, different areas. And the one that I, the one was bowel, uh, over, uh, uh, the first one, Baal Barith, master of Judah. Now, I don't have time to go in there, but that spirit is the spirit over this false worship in the church. And, and, the, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the Christian celebrity spirit that bow, that fortunes of, uh, I'll give you fortunes if you submit to our system uh, of worship and, 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 and do it. So there's different bows, bows of grace. The bow of Herman, bow, uh, master, a husband, possessor of the breaches, uh, different bow spirits, but we bind them in the name of Jesus. And we take, a, we take authority over them in Jesus' name by, uh, uh, over spirits of anointings, False anointings, false tongues, false gifts, false, all of the, the spirit, Lord of the flies, spirits of affliction, spirit of the destroyer, destroyer. See, the destroyer comes and he destroys your health. He destroys your finances. He destroys your mental health. Uh, right now in the month of Sept uh, October, all these folks are going schizophrenics are going crazy. Because these witches start praying and these, these <clears throat> strong men and these people start manifesting. Let me go on. I just put some pictures of the different vials. You can just see what they look like. There were different Baal Barif, Baal Zephon, Baal Herman, Mion, Herman. Uh, Herman was an was a area, was, a, was a, a village. Perizim, God of the breakthrough. That's when 2 Samuel, when David said, Baal per came to Baal Perizim, David struck it there. He said, Yahweh has broken my enemy before him. He said, he is the Lord of the breakthrough. So God reveals himself when we get into warfare by faith. Baal Shalisha. Uh, there, was Baal was, there was another Baal that was a calf, had a calf and a hand, uh, they had a statue with his hands out and they would put the babies in this hot fire in the, in the, in the hands that they were... Uh, there was another bow that the Greece, Greeks used. It was a bull. And uh, if you were, uh, if they persecuted and wanted to kill you, they would stick you inside this, this metal bull and light a fire under you. And you would just roast to death inside this metal, metal bull. Fire. Well, the same thing when they have abortion. When a woman has abortion, they put the solution in there and burn the baby up. Zebub, Tamar, Zebeb. They're all kind of bow spirits, but we bind them all in Jesus' name. Now, I, I, the Lord has been talking about the prophets, the 300 prophets. Now, it's not going to be just 300. It's going to be more than 300. But I, for, for, for what the Lord has given me, I'm saying the Gideon, new Gideon 300. God wants to take control of the 300. And he wants to test. He's been testing us. This, this, this coronavirus was a test. Just like Gideon. Judges 6, 34, but the spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon. Listen, God said, I'll be with you. The spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with himself. And took possession of him. Now, you got a little bit of possession of the Holy Ghost in you because you speak in tongues. But what's about to take place? The Holy Spirit is going to take possession of these prophets. They're going to come over. He's going to step in them and take control. Just like the demon took possession of certain people, they manifest, the Holy Spirit can come in and those that are submitted to him and take control. So he took control of Gideon and all this poverty mentality and all this lack mentality and all that. I'm the poorest one. That all went away. The Holy Spirit took over. The Holy Spirit <clears throat> was in Gideon. And blew the trumpet. When you blow the trumpet, the trumpet was a signal either to assemble or a sound for war. There were three blasts, two blasts, whatever the blasts they were, that was a signal to come to war. So he blew the trumpet, come assemble because it's time for war. Now the Holy Ghost in him. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is going to take you over. Yield to him. Let him do what he wants to do. You know, as, as Urkel would say, did I do that? Yeah, you did that. <laughs> yes, you did that. There are times when the Holy Ghost will come on me and I will say stuff and do stuff that I don't even remember I did it. I just let him have his way. It's like I'm just sitting back watching him work. He's just doing his thing. 
The Bible says that we are to be filled with excess, overflowing excess. You have not gotten to the excess. You say, fire, fire, fall on me. Well, it's going to come. It's coming. The fire is coming, and it's going to come. I used to watch that, that movie, The uh, uh, Quantum Leap. Amen? That's what it is. It's a quantum leap. I did a message. And Nina Marie did a message years, uh, several years about, about quantum leap. Uh, Lord gave me a prophetic word about uh, acceleration. Do you know this year accelerated? How do you get to November already? We were just trying to have Easter dinner. And now we're here at Thanksgiving. What happened? Went to sleep one morning, woke up this Thanksgiving. It's, the things have accelerated quantumly. Jeremiah 29. Then he said, I will not make mention of him, but I will, speak, I will speak his name no more. But his word was in my heart and burning and fire shut up in my bones. The fire of God is coming on these prophets and it's going to be shut up. That's shut up in their bones. That fire of God and you can't help but speak when the fire comes on you. You got to share the word of the Lord. I don't care. You'll be meeting somebody in Walmart and always say, hi girl, how you doing? He said, you know, the Lord did this and then you start talking about the Lord. Next thing you know, you got 50,000 scriptures running out of your mouth. You didn't know how I even got there. You were preaching to everybody. Amen. Amen. Second King said, even King Saul, he, when, when, when Saul became king, the, uh, the prophet told him, he said, listen, you're going you're gonna to meet some prophets with sackbut, with, with raisins, with bread, with wine, and, and you're going to be turned into another man. You're going to be turned into another man. And the Bible said that Saul laid down with the prophets and began to prophesy with the prophets. And he said, is he numbered among the prophets? This is what's getting ready to happen to the church. You're going to be like the prophets prophesying. Don't wait. I, I'm here. Don't wait to prophesy. I don't care. You don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. Start speaking the word that's in you. But what measure you, of faith you have, you speak prophetically. Speak it. Speak what you see. Speak what they're saying. Speak what you don't see. Amen. Declare what you want. God's going to back up your words. He's going to overshadow you. The Holy Ghost is in you to overshadow you. The Holy Ghost is taking your words and he's, he's releasing words. Let him speak through you. Well, I better call upon. Don't call me. You better talk. <laughs> Open up your mouth and talk. That COVID was, the beginning of the COVID was the separation of the 22,000. Remember, 32,000 came to Gideon. And he said, and Judges 7 verse 2 says, the Lord said to Gideon, these people that are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Now, we're about to break the Midianite off America. And at least Israel vaunt themselves against me saying, my own hand saved me. See, Biden can't save you. The House of Representatives can't save you. The central bankers can't save you because they're stealing from you. They don't want to save you. Amen. Ain't nobody going to save you but God. Now, therefore, go proclaim in the ears of this people saying, whosoever is fearful, let them go take that shot. Get that jab real quick. Let them return and they part early from Mount Gilead and they return to people 20 and 2,000 and they remain 10,000. And then he said in verse 4, the 97, the 10,000 came up and they began to uh, drink from the brook. He said, I want to test them. The 10,000 didn't take the jab at first. But when they say, oh, you can have church again, they say, well, we got to take your temperature and you got to wear a mask. We got to take your temperature. Don't come in our church. Uh, how are you going to be healing people and you got to, I got to take your temperature. If you got a fever, come here, I'll lay hands on you and it'll go away. Amen? We can't be scared of this stuff. That's fearful. Fear blocks faith. Fear blocks faith. And so the whole earth is fearful. Everybody's fearful, trying to go see the psychiatrist, trying to go get some comfort. Everybody's in stress and discontent and, and all messed up. Those are not the, the 300. Leave them alone. You be of the 300. Remember I did a teaching two or three weeks ago about cunningness of Satan, the cunningness of Satan? Well, you got to be cunning. Listen to this. Look at this. Verse 7 says, And the Lord said to Gideon with the 300 men who lapped, I will deliver you. He said, 10,000, go down there and drink. And the ones that put their face down in the water and just sucking up water like, oh, said, I can't use you because you're not alert. You're not cunning. You, you don't even know your enemy. Your enemy going to wipe you out. He said, I need somebody that's going to put their hand to their mouth and shut up. Lap, lap. I'm, 
I'm speaking when he says speak. I'm drinking when he says drink. I'm watching the enemy. I'm just not going to say anything out of my mouth. Pay, P-E-Y. We're in a 10-year period of pay, of the mouth of God. God said, I'm giving you authority to speak as I would speak. But if you're speaking negative stuff over your family and negative stuff over your situation, the enemy is going to come and bring that negativity to your house. So put a guard over my mouth, Lord, that I don't respond to everybody that attacks me and says stuff against me. I got to meditate on it and think about it before I give my answer. Because folks going to come with you with some crazy stuff. He said, with the 300 who lap, I will deliver you and give you the Midianites into your hand. Let all the others go home. Just go home. Don't go. Don't come over here. Go to that big church. You got 10,000 members and stay over there. Don't come over here. I, I'm serious. I don't need you sitting on the anointing. I need you to do something with this anointing. Come in there sucking the life out of everybody, getting on everybody's nerve. Don't want to do nothing. Don't want to say nothing. Just want to be, I'm just going to church on Sunday. Because Pastor, he be preaching the word, but I ain't going to do nothing after I get the word. The devil is a liar. Get rid of your fear. Get rid of doubt. He said, get in, take courage. You got to take courage. You just got to come here, courage. I'm scared, but you come with me because I'm, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go in there and talk to my boss. I want this raise. I'm going I, I to go in there and get what I got to get. I'm going to take courage. Amen. I'm going to speak up. The Lord of Shalom, peace is in my heart. Judges 17. But if you fear to go down with Pura. Now here's Gideon. He said, now if you're scared to go down, you're scared to do it. I'm going to be on you. I'm going to take possession of you. But if you still got a little doubt, now remember now, I didn't even go about Gideon and his fleece. He said, you still got to take Pura with you. And Pura means foliage, hidden in the jungle. I mean, he, he's cunning. You know, he knows how to hide and keep on, keep, he said, take him with you. I said, I'll send you as two. And he sent him by two. And, he, and, and you shall hear. You're going to hear. God said, I'm going to open up the prophet's ears. They're going to hear what's being said in the White House. They're going to hear what's being said in the back room. They're going to hear what's going on in nations and around them. You're going to hear the plots of the enemy. He said, go down, and afterwards your hands will be strengthened. In other words, God said, I already been to your future, son, and I already heard the conversation. I want you to go down there and listen to the conversation. Oh, y'all didn't catch that one, did you? Every conversation that has ever been said has been done. God already heard it. Amen. He created time. He already went past. He already been in the future and he came back and listened to everything that's going on. That's why the devil can never beat him. The devil can't beat him. The Bible says he, the devil comes to try to change the times and the seasons because he knows God controls them. So here we are it, with this COVID thing. The devil's trying to change the times, trying to push ahead their agenda. And now everybody is seeing how crazy they are. Take a shot. Remember I told you they're going to try to give you another virus? Now they got the, 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 the Delta Plus now. Ain't nobody paying no attention to them. Oh, we got Delta. Now you got to take a shot every six months, every year. Listen, I ain't going to go there, please. Y'all going to take your shots. If I go to heaven, it's going to be because God wanted me there. Praise God. I ain't got to worry about that. Uh-uh, uh, take no shot. Oh, hurry up. Ain't going to give it to you free. When the government ever gave us something free? <laughs> when? Have you ever got anything free from the government? They used to give us food stamps and give us the coupon book and stuff. But I guarantee you they would come to your house and check and see if you got an iron or a TV. You couldn't have nothing. We're going to give you the food now. We're giving you food. You can't have nothing. Yeah, here, take it over to Miss Mamie's house. Take it on over there. Hold on to my stuff. <laughs> until, they, until this lady go away. Because we can see her. You know, we live in the corner apartment building in the projects. You know, and the, it's a big courtyard, so everybody can see her coming. So we run and get the stuff and hide it. Amen. Put the mixer away. Amen. Get the iron. Put it under the bed. Amen. Go hide the iron board. Put it out the window. We lived on the first floor. So it would hang stuff out the window so they can't see it on the back side of the house. <laughs> oh, I've been there. I know. But you're talking about oppression. You're talking about slavery. 
In the 50s and 60s, that was slavery. Amen. You was a slave. You're still a slave now. If you don't take the shot, they're going to take your job. That's why we've been teaching you for 20 years to get, learn how to name Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Get your seed time and, 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 and uh, uh, sowing and reaping in, 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 in before God because you're going to need it. You're not, you may not be able to get your eyes checked out and get your eyeglasses no more. You may not be able to get your ear, hearing aids and stuff. What are you going to do when they cut off the pharmacy and you can't get your medicine? You better have the divine health and strength of the Lord and understand God will able to, is able to heal you. See, God wants to know. I'm, I'm prophesying demons right now in America and around the earth are shaking. They're full of fear. They know the prophets are coming. They know the church is rising up. They're having nightmares about us coming. Amen. They may have had a nightmare. Well, give the devil a nightmare. I'm about to come for my stuff, and I want all of my stuff. Amen. God prophesied. God said, I'm, I'm striking the tents of Midian. I'm, I'm causing my wind to blow around the earth. I'm causing a shaking in nations and a shaking in governments and a shaking. And you'll see the wicked with your very eyes. And you say, isn't this not marvelous in my eyes that the hand of the Lord has shaken the earth? The hand of the Lord has come down to see about his children. The hand of the Lord is strong and mighty. The hand of the Lord. And you'll begin to prophesy and rejoice in your homes and rejoice in your streets. And, and people will begin to open up their windows and shout hallelujah and pray. Praise the Lord because God is good. People that don't even know me, said the Spirit of the Lord, will open up their mouth and give praise. The rocks will cry out, said the Spirit of the Lord. The trees will sing of my glory when I release my presence in the earth, said the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. And so in Judges 7, 13, when Gideon would arrive, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade. And he said, he dreamed a dream and behold, the cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it. And so it fell, and it turned it upside down, so the tent laid flat. And, and, but the, the, in that time, barley was considered vile. Uh, the Israels ate that barley. Barley, you didn't make bread out of barley. You ever had barley? You make beer out of barley, amen? You don't make no bread out of barley. That's how poor they were. They were making, you know what y'all used to do? When you get real poor, you know how to make some stuff. I don't know what it is, but we're going to eat it, amen? <laughs> Whatever you found in the in the refrigerator, amen, had hot dogs in there and lunch meat in there, some spaghetti left over. You just threw it all in the pot, amen. I don't know what, just warm it up, amen. Say, thank you, Jesus, anyhow. Put some butter on your bread and eat it, amen. Be happy all about it, amen. So it was considered a poor man's food. And when he said barley, that's saying that the barley is the bitterness of, of the Israelites. The bitterness of the church is going to rise up and smite the tents of Midian. And so the enemy camped down in the valley. And Gideon took his company of 300 and he put them in hundreds. He said, 100 go here, 100 go there. He said, take you a, a pitcher and take you a, a, a shofar. They didn't have a trumpet, so they had a shofar. Judges 7, 18, and when I blow the trumpet, he said, when I come in to blow, and I all who are with me, then you blow your trumpets also on every side of all around the camp and shout, shout, pierce the ears of the enemy, shout the Lord and for Gideon, amen, marching through uh, 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 years ago, uh, what was it, 1990, we were still over... We're over on uh, New Haven. We went out through a roar. Pastor George and his son, and that, they had the trumpets. We had our banners, and we started marching through the neighborhoods on the east side and downtown roar. I mean, we, we were marching it, and we were blowing the trumpet. And people were saying, where y'all blowing the trumpet? They said, because the deliverance has come to a roar. They thought I was a nut. But, well, I was a nut, amen, because God gave me the strategies to do warfare in this city. And so we're marching through the neighborhood. This is how powerful it is. We're blowing the trumpet. You know, we got our banners flying. And this one lady come running out of our house. And she said, what church is this? And I said, this is a, a, a New Hard Worship Center, a Royal Faith Center. He said, where is it at? I said, we're on New Haven Avenue. He said, I'm coming. And she came and gave her testimony. She said, I was in my house praying, asking the Lord, I need a church. Where can I go? And the Holy Spirit said, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that will be the place to go. And she couldn't believe when she, we walked past her house blowing the trumpet, it called her in. 
that prophet sound that God's going to release in this coming months and years is the prophetic sound that people will hear that prophet, the, the prophetic word, and they're going to come running to the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen? So when you blow that trumpet, it's powerful. He said they went around and they were circled around it, but I want you to see the power of this thing. The, prof- the glory and the prophetic voice was released when they shouted. Judges 7.20, he said the three companies blew the trumpets and shattered the pitchers holding the torches in their left hands and in their right hands the shofar blowing, leaving no chance to use the sword. God said, you need not fight in this battle. I'm going to fight. He said, I'm going to deliver them into your hand. He said, you got to, he said, you don't have to go fight them. I just want you to show up. Just show up and shout. Just show up and split the ears of the enemy. Just show up and praise. Just show up and prophesy. Just show up and watch God do a work in the earth. And they cried the sword for the Lord and Gideon. Another testimony. Mid of the winter. January, I guess it was 2004 or two or three, somewhere around there, in 2000. I took the saints out again. We got our banners and our trumpets. It was 22 degrees outside, snow on the ground. And we went over to East High. And we marched around East High seven times in the cold. Blowing the trumpet when we could because it froze up. <laughs> Pastor George <laughs> was getting cold. And we blew the trumpet around East High School. That's what the Lord told us to do. He said, go march around it seven times. And then we did what it did. And then we shot it on the seventh time when we got around. Now, East High School is a whole block. That's a big, That's pretty big. Yeah, but we marched around it. The, uh, that was on a Saturday. I think it was a Saturday. Yeah, it was a Saturday. The following Monday, got a letter from the school district and the schools asking the pastors to come in and pray in the schools. Amen. Because we're praying over the schools. We were partnership with the school. I used to go over to a car herd and, and stand in the lunchroom and pray for these kids and walk the hallways and pray for them. That's warfare. That's, that's God giving you the breakthrough in the cities. Amen. Partnering with the school. I, would go to, I went to Allen School. I went to uh, car herd. I went to another school. Spanish school somewhere, I forgot where it was, different schools and going in and pray. Pray. The, the, the prophetic voice is powerful. We used to go and take teams in front of the police station was on Lake Street and pray and prophesy and speak the word of the Lord over the city. The city had, didn't know anything about deliverance, didn't know anything about healing, didn't know anything about but I began to prophesy the word of the Lord. Amen. We used to go. We go into uh, uh, Fox, Fox, the, uh, the park district over there where the golf course is over there, the uh, zoo area. We go in and prophesy and hold meetings and, and tent meetings and, and, and all kind of rallies and stuff. The language of the spirit brings confusion in the enemy's camp. They begin to bite and devour one another. Right now, they're starting to fight and bite and devour one another in, 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 in the, uh, uh, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. They're fighting against each other. They're, they're telling on each other. We've got to release confusion in their camp. Judges 7.22, when Gideon's men blew the 300 trumpets, the Lord set every Midianite sword against his comrade and against all the army. They begin to fight the Midianites, the Amorites, Amalekites, and the Arabs were all together in a circle in this big camp around. And it began in the dark. They couldn't understand each other's language, so they thought they were fighting the enemy and they were fighting each other. God put them in so much confusion because when they shouted, there was a blast in the spirit of light and glory and prophetic, prophetic utterance that shattered. See, sound has light. Light has sound, and, and, and uh, it has a sound. Light has a sound to it. Everything in heaven has a sound to it. Everything in heaven is light. It all has sounds to it. And so they blew the trumpet. The army fled towards Zerah as far as the border of Abim, uh, Mihola and Tabath. They released the piercing sound. They infused heaven's anointing. And the angels that were in the spirit realm began to bring confusion on the enemy. Arise and shine. That's what it says in Isaiah. Say, Arise, shine, for the glory 
has come upon you. The glory is sitting on the church now. The glory is beginning to rest on his saints. The glory is beginning to rest those who have prepared themselves to receive it. The glory is on you. Amen? Because so many times you get a bad news and somebody give you some bad news and you first you and he's wait a minute. Shut up, boko ramana. No, no, dog devil. Uh-uh. You ain't taking this. You ain't stealing this from me. No, 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 no. So God is releasing the sound of light through the prophets. He said, What is the sound of light? Light is it, it <clears throat> sound has a light to it, and there's a sound of light. In uh, 2005, I took a team, took my music, uh, all the praise team, musicians. And we went to South Carolina. And I met with Prophet Greg Raley and, and other prophets and other psalmists and musicians. And for two days, three days, two nights, we did just number prophetic worship. No rehearsed songs, no rehearsed sounds, just strings, trumpet, violin, trombone, whatever instruments we had, drums, congos. I mean, I was prophesying as they were playing. And we, I mean, for two days we did that. We released a prophetic sound that the church has never heard or the earth has not heard before. That was a seed that was planted in 2005. Now this sound, the seed that we planted is getting ready to manifest now in the earth realm. I mean, I've got the CDs. i got about four CDs in it. It's all prophetic sound. There's no rehearsed anything. All raw heaven music. And I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to start playing it again and release it into the atmosphere. Amen. And so we did that by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Not something we don't want to do. The Lord said, go and do this. And then they, from there, they went to Atlanta and began to do uh, gatherings. And then they started calling it harp and bowl worship. <clears throat> but we've been doing harp and bowl for a long time. I've been prophesying and singing them prophetically for 30-something years. It, they're just now catching on. A lot of the stuff. So now you're seeing the worship in these Ma Maverick City and all these other things. They're starting to pick up on some prophetic things now. And they're singing some prophetic worship, prophetic songs. Amen. But in the, in the spirit realm, there is a, always a new song to sing. Always a new thing. So I challenged that. And my, my, my praise team got mad at me, but I, I shut it down. They want to start singing the same songs over and over and over every Sunday, same song. Uh-uh, uh-uh, God's speaking new stuff every, every time we come together. There's a new sound, a new music, a new way of, wave of music. So that this is what the Lord gave me. These 300 prophets, more than 300, around the earth, they're going to be everywhere. They're going to be in nations, going to be 300 in America, 300 in Africa, 300 in or whatever. He says these prophets will be wired to release the same sound at the same time they're going to be connected to heaven's Bluetooth in their spiritual ears. Well, I will hear the same and speak the same words as a prophet in Africa. He's going to say the same words. It's just like this sound system. These speakers here, they come out, they bring, they bring the same sound coming out. It's wired. They're wired. And they bring out the same sound. God said, I'm going to do that in the spirit. You're going to see the prophets. They're going to be... Uh, 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 strongholds and principalities and powers and things that need to be dealt with well God's going to give a command to these prophets and they're going to release the prophetic word in the earth and it's going to shake the whole earth darkness is not going to be able to stand on this earth the glory is going to be released God is orchestrating many circumstances in the background like a concert I was a, in high school I, was a, I, I started off playing the clarinet after about two months I was third chair so you get to say, do, 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 do. You don't get to play the melodies. You get to just say, do, do. That's all you did in the whole, whole thing. And then you learn practice, got a little better. Then I got second chair. And then get to the first chair. Oh, you get the solos then. Do, 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 do. And I got so good at it and I had an ear for it that I became the, 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 the teacher, the conductor made me concert master. Right? And they sent me to the orchestra. Orchestra was a different from the band. So I had to go, I had band, and then I would go to class in orchestra, and I would play the clarinet in the orchestra to help them <coughs> do that. But the principle is, there are different sections. There's the trombone section, there's the horn, French horn sections, the English horn sections, there's the clarinet section, the oboe section, there's the uh, different sections. And my job was to make sure that my clarinet was tuned properly, the right pitch, the right sound, and then I would go to each section leader 
and we would tune and we would tune our instruments together and the section leader would go to his second chair, third chair and tune them and then each, I would go to each section, the trumpet, the trombone, we all had to have a hit, play the note C, the C had to sound like a C, we all had to be just our instruments to sound and say. And then when, the, then when the teacher got up, the conductor got up, she would say, do that, and then everybody play that C. And she would listen, see if anybody was off. And if somebody was off, she would look at me. Hey, why don't you get that thing tuned right? You have to have an ear to hear the sound, the tune. So I have a sensitive ear when it comes to prophetic worship and music. I have an ear to hear that. But that's what God is saying. I'm a con- he's a conductor that is tuning parts of the body. Everybody do have a different part, have a different ministration, have a different operation, but the sound has to be the same. So we're in a place now that he's tuning us up, getting ready for this outpouring of the harvest, getting ready for the glory to be released in the earth realm. It's the word sumsakios. It means to be co-spirited, to be like-minded. And so these 300 new prophets that the God is with, Gideon prophets, he said, he said, fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love on one accord and of one mind. We're trying to get us in the one mind in 2022. 2022 is the number of redemption, the number of unity, the number of, of, of coming together. So there's going to be a unity. There's going to be a freedom. There's going to be a, a, a sound coming from heaven. The prophets and the glory release a new anointing. That's what I'm prophesying. I'm here to tell you there's a new anointing coming there's a new glory coming I'm tr- blowing the trumpet and sounding the alarm prepare to receive the new prepare to receive the new wine prepare your old wine skins get rid of it and get the new wine skin ready you can't have any patches in it amen repent of everything amen make sure your temple is cleansed and pure the glory can only be handled properly it's got to be done by order it's got to be done by consecration it's got to be done by sacrifice sacrifice when David tried to bring that ark back and Uriah touched that thing David said oh can't nobody bring this glory back oh Jesus what am I going to do he went and got the priest that had sanctified themselves and he said the Bible says that he took six steps and he sacrificed. He took an animal and killed it right then and there. And they played and worshiped and prayed. And then he took another. I mean, it took him forever to get the ark back. He said, but I ain't going to get killed by this glory. I'm going to do this thing right. I'm going to receive the glory right. Amen. Because I want to be changed uh, uh, like the guy in Quantum Movie. I've just got flames coming all up out of me. I mean, I'm just wired up in the spirit realm. Releasing the glory on the inside of you. Second Corinthians 4 says, for God has commanded the light shine out of darkness. Have shine into our hearts. To give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now that says that they don't say what it is. That's what they did. Take this lantern, put it in a pitcher, this type and shadow of an earthen vessel, break that earthen vessel, and the glory explodes. When the praises go up, the glory comes out, not down. It comes out of us. That's what God wants us to release what's in us. You got to release the presence of God in you. You got to release God in you. Release him. Don't lock him in a jail cell. Release the glory that's in you. Allow him to overshadow you. Let the glory come in. You'll be on, you'll be flat, as it said, like fire shut up in my bones. This prophetic word is going to bring down this communism. It's going to bring down socialism. It's going to bring down the liberals. It's going to bring down all of those. Uh, they caught these two kings at, and they killed the two kings. Or and Zeb, uh, they chased them and uh, getting caught these two kings. And uh, I got to stop. I ain't even finished my message. Oh, Jesus. How many, how many minutes I got, Kurt? Oh, I got seven minutes. Praise the Lord. I I thought, don't expect the church at large to join in the fight. God will give the remnant to win. They ain't coming. coming. They ain't got nothing. If you've seen, uh, if you watch Facebook and you watch what's going on in these churches, they went right back to what they were doing before. Ain't got no glory whatsoever. Oh, that's the glory. Now my flesh feel good. Now I'm dancing. Look at me. Dancing ain't got no power. Sit down. Sit down. Please. 
Get some glory. Get some anointing. Get the prophetic in your church. Get the words of knowledge, words of wisdom flowing in your, in your congregation. Amen. Stop all this foolishness. It's just dancing and, and, and flesh being on display. And oh, God. Oh, God. That's just the, that's the, that's Baal Hermon. That's the Baal of, Ju of Judah that's got you doing all this crazy stuff. Think it is God. Your flesh feel real good. Oh, I got the tinglys. Let me dance. And you still broke. <laughs> Judges 8, 5 says, And he said to the men of Sukkoth, Give me, I pray you, loaves of bread. Here's Gideon chasing after these. He didn't got the bread. He's chasing these. He said, Give me bread. At least I faint. I am pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. And the princes of Sukkoth said, Are Zeba and Zalmunna already in your hand that we should give you bread in your armies? You ain't captured him. Why are we going to miss our waste our bread? That's what happened when I came to Aurora. That's, that's how the pastor treated me. Who are you? Nothing to do with you. Took 10, 12 years before he invited me to one of the meetings. When God gives you the vision, you don't have to join religion. Oh, that was good. When God gives you a vision, you don't have to join religion. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got the answer. He gave you the answer. They don't have the answer. If, he, if they had the answer, they would have been undone something by now. It takes a while, man. It takes someone that doesn't care and just does whatever God says to do. Amen. Bringing no reproach on the ministry. We need that provision anointing that Joseph anointing is going to come. I prophesy that too, that there's prophets that are going to rise up and you're going to say, where did they get this provision? Where did this money come from? How they're able to do this? supernatural money going to come into the church, into the remnant church that would be able to do the work of the ministry. God is not broke. He's not poor. There's finances in the spirit realm. And we're going to begin to pull that finances out of the spirit realm and cause a manifestation in the earth. Amen. Your faith will make it work. And he came to the men of Penuel. And the men of Penuel said, what are you? We don't want to have anything to do with you. And he said, I'm going to come back and tear your tire down. As I shared last week when I was on the bus in, the, in this dream that these pa the bus took off, the pastors took off on me. They just left me standing there on the corner. I said, Lord, what is that? He said, they were scared. He said, but the Holy Spirit that overshadows you, you got a peace. I had a peace because the Holy Spirit was with me. When the Holy Spirit is with you, you got a peace. You're not going to die. You're going to live to declare the goodness of the Lord. You're not dying. Ah, that corona going to get no idea. If you believe it's going to get you, it's going to get you. Amen. It, it, that corona works on the same principle as witchcraft. Witchcraft cannot work on a believer because you walk in love. The love of God was shed abroad in your heart. And love answers all things. And there's no answer for love. And witchcraft cannot operate against love. Amen. Amen. It ain't going to work against love. Amen. Okay, what a witch try to do. In fact, they said love is stronger than death. We got to know the word and speak the word over ourselves. Amen. Wordy words are coming out of the mouths of the prophet. I'm talking about the weight. The weight of the words are coming out. As I said, Amos, he said, Amos, I said, get out of here. Your words are too heavy for this land to bear. It's too strong for us. And so they're fighting against the prophets and they're, they're going to fight against the prophets. In, the, in Revelation, we're not even at that point, right, where the two prophets are on the earth that they're going to rejoice when they kill them. <laughs> Elijah had a bow confrontation. Along with Gideon, had a bowel confrontation. Moses had a bowel confrontation. Moses, he, the Lord took Moses to, the, to, to Mount Zephon, a bowel of Zephon. He said, I'm going to deal with him before y'all cross over to the res, before y'all go over to the Jordan, I'm going to take you over here. Let me, let, let, me, let me deal with this demon now before I let you go through the Red Sea. Let's go over here and beat him up. We are in a place. That the release of the glory, like an orchestra, an orchestra, and God is the conductor. <clears throat> And I prophesy and I speak to those that are watching even now. I lose a charge and a commission. If you're hearing my voice and the spirit of the Lord is stirring on you, that you're one of those prophets. You're one of those ones. I release an impartation right now. There's something that's going to begin to transpire. God's going to begin to visit you in dreams. He's going to begin to visit you in open visions. You're going to begin to see and hear like you've never saw, like you've never heard before in the realm of the spirit. God, open up spiritual eyes this morning. Open up spiritual ears this morning. Those that have a heart to receive, they will receive because we have this glory already in us the Holy Spirit uh, the down payment the earnest of the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us and Jesus came when we repented of our sins he shed his love abroad in our hearts 
And your scripture says that we have this glory in, er, in our hearts, in these earthen, earthen vessels. We have the glory on the inside. Now, Lord, mix the love and mix the glory all together and mix the prophetic word all together. And we release that shout. We release the glory in the earth realm. There's going to be such a, 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 a tsunami, a blast of the Holy Ghost going to be released around the earth. And we thank you, Lord, that we're going to receive. People are going to be saved whether they want to be saved or not. We think that the eyes of the wicked will be closed. Their mouths will be sewn up. I bind that spirit. There's a, there, I'm seeing voodoo dolls. I curse it in the name of Jesus. Those that have sewn up the mouths of the prophets, that have made dolls to sew up the mouths of the prophets to keep them from speaking the word, we break it now in the name of Jesus. Those of you who had locked up the prophetic gifts in cages, we break the locks now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Loose the prophets. Loose the prophets. Loose the prophets. I loose the gift of prophecy once again back into the church. I release tongues and interpretation of tongues back into the church. We release the Gideon army in the name of the Lord. Father, release them around the earth. Strong men. We call for the mighty men, as in the book of Joel. Rise up. We call for the weeping women. Rise up. We call for the intercessors. Rise up. I hear the Lord saying, rise up and take your rest. Rise up and rest in the Holy Spirit. Rise up. In confidence, rise up in faith, knowing that the battle has already been won. Rise up in that, in that place of surety and shalom and peace. There's a peace that God wants the, wants the church to enter into. We're, we're entering into our year of jubilee and inner rest, but the anointing of peace, I release it now. That no matter what comes your way, you will not be fearful, fretful, and you would say, oh, this is just another devil. Angel, go deal with that one. I ain't got time for it. I'm, he prepared a table in the midst of my enemies. My cup is running over. Tell the devil to pass you the salt and pepper as you enjoy your meal in the spirit realm. So, Father, we release that word now in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. You can give on, on, on Facebook a, a cash up, uh, Proverbs 92 or Zale. Uh, the phone number's on the screen there. 630-337-7905. Uh, Amen. God bless you on Facebook. Amen. I pray that you receive that word and you're real blessed by it. Amen. Take it and share it in Jesus' name. Amen.